I'm Mark Cavanaugh for Cavi Coaches, and today I'm going to coach you up on projectile motions with an object launched at an angle. Today we're going to look at projectile motion with a launch angle, 2D kinematics with an angled launch. These are more complicated problems than the ones that we looked at. So let's look at a home run ball that was hit by a baseball player half a meter off the ground, 42 meters per second, which is approximately 94 miles per hour at a 25 degree angle. So again, we're just gonna follow the steps, list our variables to six variables, again, separate them, one on the left and one on the right, fill in our accelerations for the horizontal and vertical direction, which is zero in the horizontal and the verticals in free fall, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Then we're gonna draw a diagram of the velocity. We know it's 42 meters per second at a 25 degree angle. But now we have an angle. So what we have to do with that is we have to break the angle down into its horizontal and vertical components. What does that mean? Well, the horizontal is how much velocity of that 42 meters per second is in the X direction, and how much of that 42 meters per second is in the Y direction, which means that we're gonna, we've created a right triangle so using that right triangle, we're gonna use right triangle trig. So VX naught is gonna equal V naught cosine of theta. We're using cosine because it's the adjacent side. So cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So hypotenuse times cosine is gonna give us the adjacent. Likewise, for the vertical initial velocity is V naught sine theta, sine being opposite over hypotenuse. So we solve for those velocities and we get the, these values. Now we have the information that it's 0.5 meters above the ground. So that's the initial height. Then it tells us to, that the ball assume that it lands at ground level. So that's our final, which is zero. And it tells us nothing about the horizontal direction. So we're gonna assume the initial horizontal is also zero. We've compiled our list. We've got our velocity diagram. Now we're ready to go ahead and solve and see what we are looking for in this question, which is how far will the ball travel? which is our final X. So we have our question mark next to the final X. And what we're looking for is the final X. So we use this equation. Again, this is the only equation that works in the horizontal direction because the horizontal direction, the initial velocity equals the final velocity with acceleration being zero. So the VX and VX squared equations would just tell us initial and final velocities are equal. So let's go ahead and cancel out the values that are zero leaving us with x is equal to vx not t. Now the problem again is that we have two unknowns. We don't know x and we don't know t. But what we do know is that the time is the same in both of our lists, the flight time of the ball. We can solve for the time using this equation because it's a second kinematic equation, second dash. So we're gonna use this equation to solve for time. The difficulty comes in is that when we plug our numbers in, we get 0.5 meters plus 17.75 meters per second t plus one half of negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. The problem that comes in is that I have a quadratic, so I can't just use my basic algebra skills to solve. So a couple different ways you can solve a quadratic. This is not really factorable with the decimals. So you can either use the quadratic formula if you prefer the quadratic formula, or you can do the method that I prefer I prefer to graph it in my calculator and find the zeros of the function or where it crosses the x-axis. So if you don't know how to do that, um, we can, I'll have a video posted and you can find out how to do that. But you find the zeros of the function by graphing it in your calculator. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And I'm gonna solve for the time. And I'm gonna value for time that is 3.64 seconds. So that's not just the flight time in the y direction, it's also the flight time in the x direction. Now that I know the time that it's in the air, I can go ahead and take my horizontal velocity multiplied by the time, and I can figure out that the seconds cancel out leaving me with meters, and that's 138.55 meters, which is approximately 450 feet. Now there are other factors that come into play with the ball being launched into the air that are not taken into account. So it's a long way for the ball to be launched. So let's look at an example. This time we're looking, same problem, just how fast is the ball moving at the highest point? So we start with our same initial conditions. 
And we want to know also what height does it reach. So if we look at a diagram of the velocity at the very beginning, and as we look at the velocity over time, once it reaches the highest point, we can see that the y velocity is decreasing and eventually reaches zero at the highest point. So this is the key, that the final velocity at the highest point is zero. That is important information that in order to solve this question, which tells us that it's only the x direction velocity, which is constant. So at the highest point, it only has the x direction velocity. So we always know the velocity at the highest point. It's always the initial x velocity. So in this case, 38.06 meters per second. Now we're gonna answer the question of what height does it reach? Well, we can see from our list of variables that we don't know time. That's our third dashed variable. So we're gonna use our third kinematic equation. And what we're looking for is our final y. How high did the ball reach above the ground? So let's cross out anything that's zero, rewrite our equation. And then we're gonna rearrange the equation and solve for y. So we get our equation y is equal to negative v y naught squared divided by 2ay, and then we have negative 17.75 meters per second squared. You can see that the seconds cancel out, and this meter on the bottom is going to cancel out with one because it's squared on the top. So that leaves us with a unit of meters, which is what we want, and we get a value of 16.07 meters. Now, if you get a negative value, you probably squared 17.75 as a negative and squared that whole thing, but it's only 17.75 and then apply the negative only after it's been squared. So if you get a negative value, you forgot a negative sign either with your acceleration or you accidentally squared 17.75 as a negative number. So the maximum height that the ball reaches above the ground is 16.07 meters. Now looking at the same problem, another approach to a different type of problem with the same example. How fast is the ball moving when it hits the ground? We start with our same initial conditions of initial velocities in the x and y direction, same height, initial, and when it hits the ground, we know that the final y is zero. The other question we're asked is what angle from the horizontal does it hit the ground? So if we look at our velocity as the ball is launched through the air, we reach the highest point, which is we, we don't need the highest point in this case. So we need it to come back down and hit the ground. So when it hits the ground, what we're looking at is finding the value of the velocity, the, this velocity, so that we can find how fast it's moving. Not the x velocity, not the y velocity. We want to find the velocity that at the angle. So how are we going to do that? Well, we know the initial x velocity is 38.06 meters per second. So what we need to do is find the final y velocity. Once we find both of those, then we have two sides of a right triangle. So looking at what we have, our list filled out, we're looking for final y. We don't know time, which means we're going to use our third kinematic equation again, the by squared equation. We're going to cross out anything that's zero, which in this case is just the final y. Then we're going to solve for what we're looking for, which is just taking the square root of both sides. Once we take the square root of both sides, then we can go ahead and plug in our numbers. And we can see that we end up with meters squared over second squared. And the square root of that is meters per second. And it gives us a velocity of 18.02 meters per second, which should be a little faster than my initial velocity because it's landing a little bit lower than the height in which it was launched from. If it's launched from the same height, that it lands, then we know that the initial and final y velocities will be the same. But in this case, they're a little bit different. It's a half a meter below. So that means we need to make sure that we solve for the final y velocity. But if it is launched from the same height that it lands, then that makes it easier for us. It's the same initial y velocity in the x and y direction. So now we're solving for this hypotenuse, which means we can use Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem we can use a squared, which is this side of our triangle, plus b squared, which is this side of the triangle, equals c squared, which is this vector on our triangle. Simplifying that, solving for final velocity, we take the square root of the sum of the squares, and we find the final velocity is 42.11 meters per second. Now, we're asked to find what angle 
that's our last and final question we're going to do in this video. So what angle? Well, once we have all, all three sides of the right triangle, and we're looking for theta with the horizontal, we can use any one of our trig functions. In this video, I chose to use sine. So we can use cosine or tangent because we have all three sides. But what we know is that sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. There's my opposite side, 18.02. The hypotenuse is 42.11. Now, I'm solving for the angle, which means I'm going to have to use inverse trig functions, which is just hitting second and then sine, cosine, or tangent on your calculator. So doing solving for theta, theta is equal to the inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse, which is inverse sine of 18.02 divided by 42.11. And then when I solve for that, I get 25. 0.33 degrees. That is the impact angle that the ball has when it hits the ground. So we walked through several complicated questions on solving projectile motion problems. We solved for a horizontal range. We solved for the speed at the highest point. We solved for the speed at the impact. We solved for the highest point that the ball reaches and an angle at impact. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great day and an even better tomorrow. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button down below and subscribe to my channel, Cavi Coaches, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Cavi Coaches.